So along with the <clears throat> production of uh, fine and decorated pots of the late classical period, a collection of um, utilitarian wares that uh, Claudia has shown us uh, before, we have only the, the entire shapes of the Agora <laughs> to show you, is known to have served a variety of purposes mainly within the um, Greek oikos. Preparation and consumption of food and drink, transfer of commodities and storage. Cooking pots, smaller casseroles, frying pans and basins represent common shapes for the preparation of food and typically referred to as kitchenware. Furthermore, jugs and hydria, mortars, braziers and various types of stands are equally encountered in the household uh, kitchen and the storerooms. Literary sources of the 4th century BC provide a view into kitchenware and dinner sets, providing the names for its shape. The reference by the Attic comic writer Axionicus is thus characteristic, as preserved in the much later work of Pollux. Commonly found in domestic contexts, uh, cooking pots and plain ware remain atypical, at least in substantial qualities, quantities from other contexts. Thus, the finding of this class of pottery in the cemeteries of the classical period provides a new approach on its use and in virtual disposal within the space reserved to the dead. How did this uh, batterie de la cuisine serve the funerary rituals and it's wh which way would be possible to reconstruct ritual performance at the grave sites through the pots left behind? We shall try to answer these questions and raise even more uh, by looking at the large quantities of plain ware and cooking pots from the classical necropolis of a small cycladic polis at Xoburgo on Tinos. Excavations on the east slopes of, of Xoburgo that we see on the, on the image, conducted by the University of Athens under the direction of Professor Emeritus Nota Kuru, have revealed part of the classical necropolis of the, at the Vardalakos field. The necropolis is located uh, in a distance of uh, 500 meters, uh, once the, the necropolis at the Vardalakos plot, um, it's uh, in a distance of uh, 500 meters to the northeast of a sanctuary dedicated to Demeter, it's number two, revealed outside the city's walls, but in proximity to it, and to the late archaic and classical building Epsilon, that is number three on the diapositive, the only one dating from this period and investigated inside the city walls. The necropolis develops on both sides of what seems to have been a narrow road uh, leading from the city to the country of Xoburgo, although the exact distance between the necropolis and the entrance to the city remains an issue to be defined. And I have marked the course of this, of this road with the, with the orange lines here. Clusters of graves have been excavated to the south of the main road, while to the north, a number of low-built constructions seem to have been intentionally organized along the south and the east sides of a long building Zeta that dominates this part of the burial ground. And I see we can see better here uh, this long building, uh, part of which is it's unfortunately missing, and the, the other uh, rectangular constructions on the south and the east side of this building. Plain ware and cooking pots were almost exclusively found in this area, broken and left on the surface and the area around these low stone constructions. We will focus today only on certain areas, and this is the topographical uh, uh, plan of this part of the, of the cemetery um, made by Thanasis Kouros. Uh, highlighted with orange, uh, where are the, um, uh, the stone constructions, and with uh, green we can see the free space between them, that it was also filled uh, with material. Um, <clears throat> these areas have offered large and rather homogeneous pottery assemblages. This means that almost entire shapes can be reconstructed from the much fragmentary material collected from these areas, pointing to the in situ intentional breakage of the pots, probably after the successful completion of the activities. 
the accumulation of hundreds of certs on the surface and along the sides of these constructions provide a consistent pattern as to how these deposits were formed, probably by the repeated cleaning of the surface. And I have some examples here. Um, this is from um, uh, the construction uh, from uh, uh, number 10, I think. Um, where you can see how this, um, the material uh, during excavation and also the, the large quantity of this courseware uh, that we uh, washed in the museum. Um, uh, from another construction, um, I think this is the 37, if I put it wrong. <laughs> um, uh, and you can see the, the large. Uh, uh, the, the fragments, the quantity of the fragments, and also some uh, characteristic uh, safes. Um, also, from a different part, um, the quantity of the search and the, uh, some of the characteristic safes that we will discuss. Uh, I'm just turning to have uh, an idea of, of the quantity and also of the, of the characteristic types um that we distinguished from the the constructions and the free space between them um this is from the area 42 north i think um and uh this is the the largest accumulation of um of certs and this is only a selection of those from the construction uh, 51 so similar forms seem repeated in its area dated from the second half of the fifth and throughout the fourth century BC. The fabric of these spots is very much characteristic, covering a color range from strong orange to reddish brown, uh, mostly semi-fine with generally small sized inclusions and only rarely uh, this is some uh, photos that I've taken with a Dinolite microscope of, of the school uh, this summer. Um, so um, with small sized inclusions and rarely only uh, larger ones, uh, this material uh, represents approximately 9% of the material, 19% of the material from the deposits in the cemetery, but equally in other investigated contexts from Xoburgo, and so we consider it to be relevant to the local uh, pottery production, but we have to do analysis yet to, to establish that. So among the mo most characteristic pottery shapes collected from the deposits are the small casseroles, the lopas, either lidded or not, the cooking pot, uh, the hitre, and um, uh, le carne, the basins, commonly with uh, two horizontal rod, uh, rolled inception handles. Lopas uh, reach standard dimensions with a di diameter at the rim between uh, 18 and 24 centimeters, while few larger uh, lopas may even reach 33 uh, centimeters in diameter and almost 15 centimeters high. Several specimens can be matched with uh, sloping or shallow domed leaves, at, as we can see on the, on the picture, that have this distinctive button-like uh, knobs. Yet, from the quantitative and the qualitative analysis of the material, it seems that only a small percentage of the lopas calculated between 15 to 25 percent in the relevant deposits were leaded, while the majority ended open in the deposits after probably being used in the same way. Yet, they all have this distinctive flange from uh, placing the lid around the inner side of the lid. In addition, approximately one third of the lopas were heavily burned on the outside, some also in the inside. These observations offer a different aspect of their use, that despite their inextricable relation to the preparation of food within the household, they seem to have served in a more varied way, ritual performance at the graveyards. Lopades are to be found in a consistently very high uh, percentage representing 60 to 65 percent of the material and thus providing the commonest recipient during activities performed at the stone platforms. Complementary to lopades are only hitre, 
and Lecane, representing around 10 and 15 uh, percent respectively in the pottery assemblances. Hitre as equally lopades show only small variations of the profile shapes and size. Due to the fragmentation of the material, no entire profile may be reconstructed and thus variation of the body and bottom uh, cannot be identified at least at this point of the study. Yet from the numerous rim fragments, it has been possible to identify one handle hitre as the prevailing type at Xoburgo, while the two handled examples are rare, extremely rare. The rim diameter reaches around uh, 14 centimeters, and for the largest examples, does not exceed 18 to 19 centimeters. The profile shape of the lip and upper body does not exactly match the Athenian examples that we see here on the, on the left, following the more elongated forms of the archaic period for Xoburgo. No leads have been ma yet matched to this heat ray. Lecane are the only, the only of these types. Unfortunately, we cannot see the entire shapes for the, it's okay. So these uh, Lecane are the only ones that, um, uh, that we can, uh, that we find in a coarser uh, fabric and not this nicely levigated one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Vicky, on ne t'entend plus. Plus personne ne t'entend. Why? Now you ah, can Maintenant, ça me. va. Merci. Thank you. Thank you too. So, uh, I guess you have seen the slides, but I'm, uh, I'm continuing. I'm, uh, I'm presenting this lead or stemmed ball, this fragmentary one from uh, Xoburgo, that has a... Um, a parallel one from the sanctuary of Poseidon and Amphitrite at Kionia. And we see this overlap of the material at the end of the fourth century when the, the sanctuary there is founded. And also a close parallel from the Athenian Agora also dated to the uh, second half of, uh, of the fourth century. And um, this is an important one. It was found in situ in front of construction uh, 51. And I think it's the, the very characteristic also local fabric fabric uh, that, we, that we found for the Lopades and for uh, Hitre too. So a distinctive and distinctive type uh, that regrettably does not preserve the entire profile has a molded foot concave beneath in two or three degrees. Uh, the foot resembles the black glazed Attic Cantharoi of the last quarter of the fourth century, uh, at least in my eyes. Um, um, these are found singly or in pairs in the assemblances, rarely in sets of three uh, or four. They are all pierced 
And thus, if we accept that their identification as cantharoi, they should have been used for the libations performed during the rituals and not for consumption. But this is a really puzzling uh, shape. We, we haven't reconstructed yet the rest uh, of the body. Complementary are the very, very few Attic black glazed skiphoi and cantharoi uh, collected from the deposits from the deposits. This is actually um, most of the shapes that can be uh, reconstructed that we can see here. Uh, they present from 2% up to 8%. Uh, in all the, um, uh, the contexts uh, under study. You can see for the construction 51, we have uh, from the minimum number of, of individuals, 13 fine were in a total of uh, 780 vessels. Uh, for the deposit to the north of wall uh, 42, we have only 10 um, uh, fine were in a total of uh, 190 uh, vessels. And for stone construction 37, we have only six fine wear in a total of uh, 215 uh, vessels. So this is really very few. This is the minority uh, of um, uh, black clays. Uh, lastly, not worthy is the presence of mortars and stands in the pottery deposits. Mould made mortars are commoner in the context of the fifth century, yet equally represented in the context of the second half of the fourth century BC. This large and heavy household ware should have not been easy to carry around. Their presence in the cemetery area and indeed in relation to the stone constructions remains puzzling unless we accept that grain was pounded there as part of the rituals. Complementary to the use of mortars seem to have been some heavy pithos bases. I show you only one example here, uh, some of which uh, were found in situ on top of the stone constructions. The visible friction marks on the bottom of these bases point to a probable use as, as mortars uh, as well. Cooking stands as equally mortaria that we have seen. Uh, belong to the mobile cooking equipment. Their frequency at Xoburgo uh, is, however, not uh, surprising. Cooking stands and braziers belong to a long potting tradition at Xoburgo and seem to have been an inextricable part of the ritual activities that took place at the open already from the late 8th century BC. This fragmentary material from the stone constructions at the necropolis do not allow, allow for a complete uh, reconstruction of their profile. They seem, however, to have formed a tall fenestrated ring that reached approximately 13 to 15 centimeters high and a diameter at the base of 22 for the smallest specimens and up to 35 for the larger ones. Most fragments have traces of fire or they are completely burned all over. Assemblages of plainware and cooking pots of the 4th century BC are principally known from domestic contexts, from the Athenian Agora, the Attic countryside at Vari, uh, the north slopes of Mount Egaleo, in the front in front of the Dima wall, from the area uh, of the later forum in Corinth, from the ancient Alice in the Argolite, from Olynthus, among others. The pottery resemblances from Xoburgo correspond to the report, uh, repertory of the household equipment from the above context, mainly related to the preparation of aliments and their cooking. Yet other shapes related to storage and consumption, mainly drinking, are practically absent from the deposits at Xoburgo. Still, a more detailed look in the composition of the uh, deposits, I have placed here um, uh, the charts just to see the, the composition of the deposits in the household uh, uh, context and uh, from the, the cemetery of uh, Xoburgo. So a more detailed look into the composition of the deposits equally reveals pronounced differences among the material from Xoburgo and the variety of shapes represented in the above household contexts. 
Furthermore, on the contrary to the predominance of the Lopas in the assemblances from Xoburgo, in other contemporary contexts, Hitre represent the commonest and largest category. We've seen earlier on with um, Claudia's material from Eretria, and also Susan Rotroff calculated uh, the number of Hitre from the area of the Athenian Agora as almost double in comparison to the Lopas in the context dating to the classical and Hellenistic periods. In addition to domestic contexts, plainware and cooking pots are occasionally only reported in relation to sacrificial pyre from funerary contexts of the 4th century BC. Within the family perivolos of Phanocrates from Ramnus in Attica, more than one sacrificial pyre are reported. Pottery collected from these areas consists mainly of cooking pots, of lopades and hydre, uh, black glazed cantharoi, ascoi, and other smaller shapes, all dating to the last quarter of the fourth century, according to the publication by Vasilios Petrakos. The largest assemblance of all is reported to have contained almost a hundred pots there, mended from numerous fragments. Likewise, a similar uh, pyra has been reported from the funerary enclosure of Dionysius from Kolitos in the Athenian Keramaikos. Evidence for comparable rituals involving the intentional destruction of cooking pots within the cemetery is equally attested in the northern coast of Attica, in the large necropolis of Phoenicia, close to Anabisus, dated to the late 5th or uh, end the 4th century, but this material is not yet uh, published. A distinguishing feature of the rituals performed at Xoburgo is the presence of the stone-built uh, platforms. These seem to have formed the focus of ritual activity, probably repaired throughout this long period of more than a century of use. Um, the use of different construction methods and the incorporation, incorporation of different building materials seems supporting such a suggestion. At least for the ones we have investigated so far, they do not seem to have covered any grave, but they were founded directly on the natural rock, as the, the 51 that I show you here. It is possible that certain of them equally served as the basis for the funerary monuments that were equally erected within the cemetery. Yet the predominance of plain and kitchenware from this area is certainly impressive and comes in complete opposition to the south part of the cemetery, where large quantities of mostly drinking vessels, skiphoi, cantharoi, kilikes, were collected from the fill layers of the tombs. Whether one should consider the material from this part of the necropolis as complementary to the one from the stone constructions and thus representing two successive stages of the rituals performed at the cemetery of Xoburgo remains a logical assumption. On the other hand, there seems to exist a quite sharp distinction between the material used and deposited in the two areas of the cemetery. This could be taken as evidence for distinguishing between private rituals performed by the family kings at the grave during the funerals and thereafter, and possibly communal rituals in the context of official annual festivals organized by the police as part of his official cults to the north. At Athens, on the third day of the Anthesteria, celebrated on the 13th month of the month Anthesterion, the Hitri took place that involved the consumption of a specific porridge based on water and containing cereals and honey. The vessels that contained the foodstuff were offered to Hermes Chthonios and his role as psychopombos. According to Burkett, the consumption of this porridge derived from a collective mythical tradition that provide, thus providing a specific chthonic framework for the rituals. At the Spartan sanctuary of Apollo Iakinthos at Amicles, the two separate parts of the religious rituals that were addressed to the hero Iakinthos and the god Apollo involved different food preparation and their consumption by the participants according to the detailed description of Athenians. Food preparations were specific to festivals with chthonic character, an aspect common in many cultures and societies up until our days. 
it is possible that these meals re represented a symbolic repetition of the food consumed at the funerals, especially those organized for the prominent members of the society. These communal rituals provided a cohesive framework for the participants in ensuring the sustainability and continuity of local myths and traditions. The regularity of these rituals throughout the 4th century, as expressed in the material record at Xoburgo, provide thus a differential view into the function and use of kitchenware and household-related pottery for ritual activities. Thank you very much.